Now I'm able to tell if a user is logged in or not based on the token stored in the local storage and every component in the app gets that information thanks to the use context hook. What's still missing is how to put this token to the local storage once a user logs in and how to determine which routes the user has access to. Before starting to implement any functions in the register and login components, first I want that the links in the header change based on if there is a user logged in or not. If the user is not logged in, I want to see register and login links, otherwise profile and logout. And to do that, I can use conditional rendering with the help of the so-called ternary operator. The condition for that will be if there is a user object in the user data state, which is the global state I defined in the app.js in the last video. I go to the header.js because that's where I display these links and to get access to the user data I need to import use context from react, user context from the app.js like I did before and define user data by the user context state. Then I can use user data.user as a condition. If it has a value then this first block will be rendered otherwise the second one. I cut this nav tag block with the ml auto class and paste it to both cases the second one can stay like that, but as for the first one, the one with logged in user, I change the routes and the labels to profile and logout. Although the logout route here will be the root route for now. And now in the browser I get the error saying user data is undefined. And that's because in the app.js I forgot to wrap the header inside of the context provider so the header component didn't get access to the user data. So I put it inside of the provider as well. And if I go to the browser, since I still have a valid token in the local storage left from the previous episode, I will see the profile and logout links in the header. But when I open the developer tools, go to application, local storage and delete the token value. Refresh the page, then I will see register and login instead. And put it back again. Refresh and profile and logout, they come back. And that's how I can use conditional rendering with the ternary operator and the user data dot user object as condition. But it would be so much better if I don't need to manually insert this token, but it would happen automatically after the user authentication turns out to be successful on the backend. And it would also get deleted on logout. So I will start with this latter one, the logout. I can add an on click attribute to the logout link. And here on the top, I implement the logout function. It will set the token and the user values of the user data state to undefined and set the auth token to an empty string in the local storage. And that's all I need for logging out a user. Now I'm logged in in the browser. I can see the token in the local storage here in the developer tools. Then I click on logout and that brings me to the welcome page. The token is gone and I see register and login on the right side of the header. And that was all I needed to do for the logout function. So logging out works fine. Let's do the login part, which won't happen in the header component, but in the login component. Here in the login.js, I still have the post request commented out. I bring it back. And as for the users, the endpoint will be slash API slash users slash login. The data will be new user. And I will make this handle submit function to an asynchronous one. Then I can call the response variable login response and first I just console.log it out to see how it looks like. And classic mistake is forgetting to import Axios when making an HTTP request to the backend. So I do it here. And after that, if I go to the login for testing, I cannot write random things anymore. I would get an error message because the authentication in the backend is working. I have to enter an existing username password combination. So I try Adam and first, and I can see the user data in the terminal, which came now as the server's response. Here the user data state, the global variable, it doesn't have a token and the user value yet. That's what I need to change next by using the set user data function. I set the token to login response.data.token and the user to login response.data.user. And finally, to put the token in the local storage, I use the local storage dot set item method. I set the key to out token and the value 
to loginresponse.data.token. So this login is basically the opposite of the logout function, just with an extra post request included before. And one last thing, let me redirect to the fruit list after the user logged in, so that I won't stay on the login component. And then if I click on login now, I'm officially a logged in user and I can check my profile, which doesn't do much now, but once you understand how to use the use context hook, it's really easy to fill with user specific infos. Then I log out, which works as well. And I still have the registration left, which I'm about to implement now. What I already have in the register component is a form with a submit button that outputs the new user with the username password properties on the console, or something like not sure if the password and the confirm password values are not the same. I make the first changes based on what I have in the login component, by which I mean importing use state, importing use context, importing user context, and importing Axios. And on the top of the component, I define the user data and set user data variables. That's because I want the user to be logged in immediately after registering. Before making the post request to the register endpoint, I make this function asynchronous as well. And then after the password check, I do await axios.post to the slash API slash user slash register endpoint. And the data I'm sending will be the new user object. And after the registration is finished, by using the same username and password, I also send a login request so that the user will receive a token, which will make it a logged in user. So I can copy all these lines from the login.js with setting the user data context, putting the token in the local storage, and also redirecting to the fruit list on the bottom. And that means that the register process will be basically a user register and a user login combined. And in the browser, let me just register a new user called carrot, password will be three, and then I can see that I'm a logged in user. And I still want this profile component to be able to show my user details. So that's what I can do next. Before actually starting to work on the profile, I want the username being displayed in parentheses in the header right next to the profile. Since I already stored the user data in the header, I don't need to change much for that. Simply put the user data.user.name in curly braces after the profile label. Now if I refresh the browser, where I'm still logged in as carrot, I can see carrot in parentheses next to the profile. But if I click on that, there is still no info. So in the profile component, first of all, as always, I need to import use context and user context and define user data and set user data on the top of the function to get access to that global variable. And then, just like I did in the header component, I can display the values in curly brackets. So styling doesn't really have a priority for now. It will be simply a few lines with bold H4 tags and line breaks at the end. And it will display the user ID, the user name, and the registration date. And after this, I think we could consider the user authentication and authorization mechanism kind of done. The basics are working fine. Registering, logging in, checking the profile, logging out. Actually, one last change. Let me redirect to the login page after logging out. I think that's a little bit better. So then I log in as carrot three, login and log out. Yeah, I think it's fine. But there are still some extra changes I want to make. For example, I want to add more protected routes so that editing, deleting and adding fruits will only be allowed for logged in users. On the front end, I will solve that with conditional rendering the same way I did in the header component with a ternary operator, which will depend if the user data.user object has a value or not. If it does, I will display the delete and edit buttons like I have done so far. If it doesn't, then instead of those buttons, I will have a paragraph saying you need to log in to edit or delete. And since I'm using the user data global variable, I will need to import the use context and the user context. I do the same stuff I have already done several times to get access to the user context. And I do exactly the same in the add fruit component, conditional rendering with the user data.user object. And I either display the add fruit button or display the message saying you need to log in to add fruits. And 
again, I import use context, user context, and define user data and set user data. And that should be it on the front end side. Let's go and check it out. I am now logged in as Carrot, so I can add the new fruit and I should be able to edit it as well. Let's say I change the amount. I click edit, then the amount in the fruit list has changed as well. And if I click on log out, then I'm logged out. Try to add a new fruit, but I can't because I get this message and also try to edit one. But instead of the buttons, I get the message again. And I think this was a complete example now on how to implement the user authentication system with JSON Web Tokens on both front-end and back-end. Of course, as always, there are many ways to improve. The styling, for example, or the error messages are not being displayed properly and so on. But at least the basics are working. So I will finish now this video and see you in the next video.